All right, boys, welcome back to the channel. So we're going to be playing a nice, chill game called Firewatch. So yeah, I hope you guys will enjoy this one. I've played it once before a long, long time ago. Don't remember any of it, but uh, we're starting a new game here. So let's see how it goes. Oh, I didn't realize I had to interact with it. I see Julia. It's about your age, late 20s, laughing with well-dressed professors and grad students from nearby uh, CU Boulder. You, Henry, are out drinking with your pals. You approach her. You are drunk. So, what's your, you know, major? You, you're pretty. <laughs> Uh, let's see. We we'll probably assume that she's with, uh, she's in the university, so what's your major? You saw the word major, and it smells like course. <laughs> you give an awkward smile. Evolutionary biology, she says. And I'm a professor. Oh, cool. Ah, uh, cool, you reply. What's yours, she asks. She sniffs the air. Toxicology? Was that a burn, you ask? She says, definitely. Where is she hurt your feelings? She asks you if you want to, sp to split a cheeseburger. Holy, okay, that was fast. One week later, you and Julia, you are Julia's boyfriend. Oh, what? To use objects. Okay. Oh, pick up the backpack. What? Okay. Oh, I can move. So I can't click on the elevator. Okay, I'm assuming I go to the truck. Or do I go to this? They're both lit up. Okay, no, it's gotta be the truck. Alright. Yep, load gear. I'm surprised you would throw that in the bed. Personally, I would've just thrown it in like the, the floor of the passenger seat. You date for over a year. She drives you absolutely nuts. It's great. You move in, you share an apartment near the school with a view of the mountains. You two drink beers out on the deck. You drink beer just about anywhere. Life is good. Julia wants to get a dog. There's a scruffy, undersized beagle. Julia is in love. She wants to bring it with her to class. She's also an intimidating but gentle-eyed German. There's also an intimidating but gentle-eyed German shepherd. Nothing bad could happen to Julia while walking, the, walking this dog. It's badass. I mean, she... If she's in love with the beagle, we're getting the beagle. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love German Shepherds, but if she's in love with the beagle, we're getting the beagle. You adopt the shepherd and name him Mayhem. You got the beagle and she names him Bucket. Okay, we're getting Bucket. Bucket's a good dog, and a week later, you've totally forgotten about the other one. Julia loves him. You love him too. Aww. 1979. You talk out on the deck. It's summer. 9.30 p.m. and the heat still radiates off the high desert. Yeah. It's 9.30 p.m. and you can still feel the heat radiating off of a desert? You're insane. Human beings should not be living in that area. <laughs> what do you think about kids? She asks. Kids? Not very smart or good at much. <laughs> I'll say if you and I have some, a couple little idiots. That'd be pretty good. One day? One day. Why rush? No, absolutely not. That we, we should have kids. In that case, we should probably get married. Yeah, I would like that, you say. Kids are going to be screwed up enough. It's probably for the best that their parents are hitched. You say she's absolutely right. That's awesome. What the hell? I... I don't remember much of this. Oh, I guess I already got my bat, my pack on me. Okay. Alright, let's go to the board. Thoroughfare Trailhead. Do not forget to check in. No fireworks. You're in their country. Learn to live with bears. Yeah, that yeah, that's uh, that sucks. Thoroughfoot Trail is not recommended for inexperienced hikers. Yeah, probably because of that. Uh, does it say anything else? Thoroughfoot is primitive backcountry trail. Okay, so it's probably like not. It's probably not. Uh, never mind. I'm not. I'm, I'll stick my foot in my mouth. Two Forks region overview. Thoroughfoot lookout. 
Rare Tooth Points, Supply Drop, Therefore Basin, Wapiti Meadow, Mule Point, Genesee Lake, Thunder Canyon, Two Forks Lookout, Ruby River, Cottonwood Cheer Creek, sorry. Wow, I can't read. Five Mile Creek. The Thoroughfare. Thoroughfare. Trailhead? Is that what this is? Trailhead? You can barely read it. Adjacent regions. Okay. Oh, so this region is that one. And that's the adjacent regions. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Anyways, alright. Um, I guess we keep going. Alright, let's go. Man, this game is beautiful. I remember it being like real a really beautiful game. I don't remember none of this though. So there's night and Julia is four hours late. She doesn't call. You're worried and getting angrier by the minute. 1980. She walks in after you've gone to bed. She's not quite drunk, but she's clearly been having a fun time. You fight when she gets between the sheets. You get mad, you ignore her. <coughs> let's just ignore her. I, I don't want to get mad. It's 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 bad to go to bed mad, so let's ignore her. Ignoring her is better than getting mad. You don't touch each other all night. The next day you feel guilty for being so angry and ask her about her evening. She says it was great. You hold old into a tiny pill of resentment. Make some coffee and go to work. Never go to freaking bed mad. Never go to bed mad. If you can't make up, then at the very least, don't go to bed mad. Do something to make it to where you are not mad. 1981. Julia still likes to draw. She draws plants from her research. She draws all the places you go. She draws you. You pose and flex like a human. You frolic like a Victoria's Secret model. Oh, God. Mm -hmm. Victoria's Secret. I feel like the Victoria's Secret model would be hilarious. But, me man. Me flex. Me he man. You look awesome. Oh, what the hell? Oh, bro, that was a lot of BFGs, man. You're crazy. I would have broken a freaking ankle. Oh, I shouldn't say BFGs. BFRs. Sorry. What the hell is that thing? Oh, it's just a tree. Anyways. How long have we been hiking? The sun's already going down? It wasn't that late when we got here. At least I'm assuming that in between these little story bits where we've been hiking this whole time. Two forks. Fire lookout. Two forks lookout tower. Eight more miles. Oh my god. This trail must be huge. Space bar to climb over obstructions. <coughs> oh, that looks gorgeous. 1982. During the summers, you and Julia enjoy walking bucket at night. There's a festival in town. It brings in folks far from far away places. One of them tries to mug you with a knife. Bucket gets kicked. Bib bib buff. Wait, what? Uh, oh, okay, she gets flustered. Has trouble speaking when she is stressed. Oh, okay, you confront the attacker. You scare him away. You beat his goddamn face in. Oh, man, I would love to beat his face, but let's scare him away. Reaching into your pocket like you've got a gun and threaten to kill him. He, you manage to scare all three of you. You manage to scare all three of you. He runs away. She has to take a different path from the day forward. You say, okay. You don't want to go that way either. And then on you walk by the river. 1984. Plans to have kids gets away late by work. Oh, man. That, that sucks. Julie gets offered a job at Yale. He lives in Connecticut, 2,000 miles away. Great job, associate department chair. She wants to move. You absolutely do not. Convince her not to take the job. Agree if she commutes back and forth. No, commuting. Oh, no. No. No, dude. If she's adamant about taking the job, then she should take it. But commuting is terrible. That's so hard. That's so hard. Convince her not to take the job. Oh man, I don't, I don't know what to do. Should I uh, convince her not to take the job? I feel like commuting back and forth would be very difficult on the both of them. But convincing her not to take a job is selfish. Oh man, I feel like if we convince her not to take the job, she might resent us. And we may regret it. But if we commute, there might be a lot of fights. Man, I don't feel like there's a right answer here. So let's... 
convince her not to take the job. That way, at the very least, we're together. And tell her that she, this means uh, you two won't have a family. This means you two won't have a family. She says that's bullshit. She's totally right. She asks if her taking the job means you won't come with her. You say yes. Again, bullshit. But she does decide not to take it. Oh, man. That's, that's just terrible. You're putting a wedge between them. Julie's asked to leave... Julie's asked to leave Boulder on paid leave after having an episode. She lost it on a colleague for borrowing books that were important to her research. She didn't remember that she had happily loaned them to him just two days prior. Oh, no. That doesn't sound good. She was found crying in the stairwell. He said that maybe you guys should talk, uh, talk to someone about it. You make macaroni, drink wine, and try to forget about it. No, let's talk to someone about it. To seeing multiple doctors and having many tests, they are worried that Julia might be suffering from early onset dementia. Oh no, she's 41. Oh no, she's 41. Oh, that sucks. The odds of her having a child are slim to none at that age. Uh, yeah, the, so I doubt they're going to be having any kids. Especially if, if she's going to have to deal with medical bills and stuff like that with onset dementia. With early dementia. You both decide to keep it a secret for now. Oh, that that's that's terrible. Oh, what I guess I'm camping out for the night. Journal, pick up. Oh, that's amazing. Oh come on. He man. That's amazing. So we have her we have her journal. Bucket is getting older. Julia comments that it's kind of nice because he gets in less trouble around the house. A week later, she goes back to the university. 87. Julia's affliction gets worse. She can't remember things in class. Her research is in shambles. She drives her car to the next town over for no particular reason and has to be brought home by the police. She's devastated. She's sent home on permanent medical leave. Oh, no. Some days you get the Julia who calls you a dope and your unborn children like little idiots. Other days you get a stranger. She pulls into bed to make love. After five minutes, she goes into a panic, believing her dad is at the door. You tell her family. They're crushed and begin to make trips to and from their home in Australia to visit her. For a while, your friends come by, come by with little things to brighten the day. She gets worse. Nineteen eighty-eight. You spend your days following Julia around the house. You count the seconds between the two early vi two weekly visits from Daniel, the nurse. He suggests that Julia could live somewhere else, somewhere with a 24-hour care, a home. It sits with you for a couple months. You decide to move her into a full-time care facility. You're determined to take care of her by yourself. <sighs> full-time care medical facility might be better for her, but I, I feel like that's kind of just dumping her. You know, like we're, we don't want the responsibility. You know, it's... It, Marriage is to death do us part, you know, in sickness and in health. We're going to take care of her by herself. We're going to try. Oh my God, this is getting so, like, depressing. I don't remember none of this. Um, I guess I'm supposed to go this way. God, this looks gorgeous. Oh, look at the deer. It's a buck. It's a beautiful buck. I'm sorry, buddy, but you're going to have to just go get... You're going to have to run. Yeah, get out of here. It is impossibly hard. The worst is when you get mad at her, like when she tries to cook her own food. You can't do anything without her, and she can't do anything without you. Man. When she goes to sleep, you stay up for a few hours, drinking on the deck, watching baseball in the summer, college basketball in the winter, drinking then too. Oh, no. Start going out after you put her to bed. The first time you do it, you worry about her getting up and walking around light while you're gone. Put a chair in front of the bedroom door. You trust that she sleeps like a rock. <coughs> this is horrible. This, is, this was a horrible decision. Trust that, that she sleeps like a rock because I feel like if we were to lock her up, she would freak out. You're at the same bar at the boring end of Pearl Street. 
at the boring end of Pearl Street. It's nice there. Over time, you tell Sheila, the bartender, everything. Huge weight off. You're home and in bed by 1 a.m. a couple nights a week. You look forward to those nights. That's terrible. 89. Why not you're stopped at a DUI checkpoint? Oh, no. You blow a 10.10. Taking a jail for the night. You consider trying to hide it, but you tell your sister-in-law, Susan. Julian's parents take the next plane from Australia. They can't believe the state of your house is in. Then they tell you Julia is coming to live with them. You don't argue. You say you'll visit soon. A few weeks go by. Summer is coming. You see an ad in the paper for a job. Oh, you take it. Oh, no. We may, I think we should have just put her in the home. Oh, that's, oh, that's a terrible end to that. Into the lookout tower. Oh, man, that's just depressing. Hey, look, <laughs> everything's floating. That's funny. Oh, no, it's literally just part of the grass. Okay, never mind. I didn't realize it was part of the grass. I also don't think I was talking to the mic properly. I think I was, like, off to the side. But hopefully you guys heard everything I've been talking about and been saying. I've been talking a lot. Like, I, I, I don't know. Man, this whole thing is just boarded up all the hell. I guess because it probably hasn't been in use for a while. Let's, let's go to the side, see if there's anything over here. Nope, okay. Yeah, I bet you this thing probably hasn't been in use for a while. They probably just boarded it up to keep uh, the windows from shattering, stuff like that. Turn on the power. Nice. Hello, Two Forks Tower. Delilah. Flora of the Shoshone poster. Two Forks Tower, this is Thoroughfare Tower. Come in. Oh, I guess I got a contact supervisor on radio. Reply. Hold left shift to activate radio. I like dialogue. Really shit. Um, hello? Whoever this is? It's Henry, right? Yeah. I'm Delilah. Yeah, that's what the guy said on the phone. So, what's wrong with you? Excuse what? me? <laughs> People take this job to get away from something. So, what's wrong? What's wrong with you? That's a great idea. Go ahead. Look, I just hiked for two days, so I don't really follow whatever it is you're doing right now. You take a stab at what's wrong with me. Fine, then can I what, sleep forever? Sure, buddy. Okay, now go ahead. Hmm. You've killed three ex-husbands. You're rebelling against mom. Nobody back home can stand you. Okay, um, you're probably just rebelling against a mom who wishes you had given her grandkids, by the sound of your voice, at least 15 years ago. You Damn. come out here and it really grinds her gears and you love it. Can I sleep now? <laughs> Well, she also says I fuck immature men, but in my defense, who wouldn't want a 28-year-old with ambition and energy and some fire in his belly in bed? Me. Hey, I'm going now. <laughs> Just a second. Now it's my turn. Okay. Good night. Bye. Let's see. I don't know anything about you, but nine times out of ten, folks out here simply got dumped. Huh. Is that it? Close. Good night. <laughs> Good night. Welcome to the job. <laughs> what the fuck? Okay. <laughs> That's one hell of an intro. Good morning, Henry. Well, I guess good afternoon. <laughs> you probably slept like a rock. Anyway, uh, there's still a few hours of daylight to get some work in. I can see you at your desk, so call me when you're ready. All right, boys, I'm going to go ahead and end right here for tonight. And yeah, hopefully you guys have enjoyed so far. This has been kind of interesting, a little depressing. I'm not going to lie. But um, yeah, I don't remember like any of this. Not really. Like I remember the way some of this stuff looks, but that's about it. I don't remember the story. I don't remember it being that depressing. So anyways, I hope you guys have been enjoying it. I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace. Bye.